All right. So in this next example, what we're going to be dealing with is percents. And we're going to be dealing with percents rather than just converting them from decimal to, uh, rather than converting them always to decimals um, and fractions, we're just going to leave them as percents. But we will work through two different things. But the main important thing I want you to, to understand and what we're going to really be focusing on this is when we're dealing with percents and ratios. Remember, a ratio represents a part over a whole. And a percent is the same thing. It's really dealing with a part over a whole where the whole is always going to be 100%. So when we're doing these percent problems, there's, two, there's a proportion I want you guys to have memorized. All a ratio is is a part over a whole. It's a comparison between a part over a whole where the percentage is going to be dealing with a part percent over the whole percent, which is always going to be 100%. All right? So this is how we're going to be dealing, this is how we're going to deal with our ratios as a comparison of a part over a whole. So now what we need to look at is really, we already, we're always going to have 100% here, always. And then we just need to determine, well, what are the values that we have? So it says, what is 15%? Well, obviously, that's our part of our percent, right? So that will be 15% of 120. So what 120, does that represent the part or the whole? The whole, represents the whole. So the thing that we're going to look for is the part. What part of 120? is equivalent to pretty much 15% because 120 is the whole, right? That's like 100%. That's the whole. So 15% is the part. Well, then what number is that for 120? Because obviously, if that was 100, that would be 15. But this is 120. So what's the new one? So I'm going to write this as an x. And then, since we have a proportion, we can apply the cross product. So basically, what I'm doing is multiplying 120 times 15% is equal to 100% times x. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's a couple different ways that we can go ahead and do this. Um, we can multiply these as whole numbers. So I'll do one way this way and one way this way. And basically, guys, it really kind of depends on what you are most familiar with. One way is just to multiply 120 times 15. OK? So 0, 10. 5, 6, placeholder, 0, 2, 1. Add those up, 0, 0, 8, 1. So when I multiply 120 times 15%, I have um, 100, 1,800% is equal to 100% times x. Again, I want to solve for x, so I divide by 100%. And notice, ladies and gentlemen, like you had in, frat, in when you're dealing with in physics, if you had chemistry, your units, when you're dividing your units, those are going to divide out. My zeros divide out, and I'm left with 18 equals x. And does that kind of make some sense? Yeah, so it'd be 18 is my answer. I could also, rather than multiplying by 100, guys, we could also get rid of our percents. So to get rid of our percents, and when you're multiplying a, a whole number times your percent, I could also just say, well, then really this is 120 times 0.15. Right? You can just get rid of the Instead of having to divide by your percents, which gets, when you divide by your percents, you get rid of the percent, right? Because you're multiplying by 15 and then dividing by 100. Well, I could also just move over the decimal point and now, do multiplication this way, and guess what? I'll get the exact same answer. So if you guys remember, when you're multiplying diamond a smaller, when you're multiplying a smaller number times a larger number, the smaller number always goes on the bottom. And if here is this decimal point, here is this one, so I've got to make sure I include those two zeros. And then you just apply the product. So 5 times 0 is 0, 5 times 0 is 0, 5 times 0 is 0, 5 times 0 is 10, 5 times 1, oh wait, 5, that's 6, right? Then we do 1. Placeholder. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 1 is 1. And then I have 1, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4. Yep. Wait, what? What? I did fives. 
That gave me that. You agree? Not on the second round. That was only from the first round because I had to carry the I had to carry the one from that ten, five times two. But on the second round, I didn't have to do it. So, is everybody okay with my? Sorry. Sorry, I did that kind of quick. Is everybody okay with my math that I've done so far? Now we need to determine where's the new decimal point. Remember to turn the two decimal point. One, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. And what do you get? 18 again. So you get the same answer, guys. You're not going to have a calculator. So this might be easier for some of you, or this might be easier for some of you. I don't know. I want to show both ways. Yes? Yes, the reason why I'm going over it the long way is because, yes, absolutely, when you have your simple fractions, I could easily just go up here and show you the method how to do it like this, right? That'd take, the video would be 30 seconds. It wouldn't take long. But what I'm trying to do is because what if I give you, give you numbers like this? It's not going to become that easy, right? So you need to understand the process for this so that you can apply it to many different examples. If you understand the process or don't understand the process and you can figure it out without doing the process, that's perfectly fine. But if you come across a number like this and the only thing you understand is the tricks that I've showed you, then what are you going to do? And if you don't have a calculator, then what are you going to do? You know what I'm saying? So that's the, exactly why I'm showing you guys this long way because, yes, I can show you guys easier and quicker ways to do things.